Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mrs. Sidra and I am your chemistry teacher. In class 8, we will complete first four chapters of the chemistry textbook and the first chapter that we are going to start today is the fundamentals of chemistry. It is a very important chapter which includes branches of chemistry, history, many important definitions and many chemical calculations. You need to study this chapter clearly and thoroughly so that then you will be able to solve many important numericals in the next chapter. So let's start the chapter. First of all, we will study about the history of chemistry. Ancient Greek philosophers used to think that all the materials of the universe are made up of four elements that are earth, air, water and fire. They were not aware about the basic unit of matter and they used to think that all the materials are made up of only these four elements. At the start of 19th century, John Dalton, who was an English chemist, proposed a theory in which he said that all the elements are made up of tiny indivisible particles called atoms. According, according to him, atom was not able to divide further. There was not the concept of subatomic particles at that time. Second postulate of his theory was that the atoms of a particular element are similar to each other. They were same in mass, same in size and they were of same type means they were identical to each other. This showed that elements are the groups of the same type of atoms. Number three, during the chemical reactions atoms combine or separate or rearrange themselves. So the formation of the compounds occur when atoms of the same kind or of the different kinds combine or arrange to form new things. The last postulate was the atoms can neither be created nor destroyed. This means that we cannot make or we cannot break an atom. They are already present in the nature. Till that time there was no concept of the subatomic particles and so the, uh, Dalton used to think, Dalton thought that atom is indivisible. Although his theory was very helpful in further research, but some of the postulates were found defective and were changed. Another Greek philosopher, Archimedes, also played a very important role in the field of chemistry. His principle that when an object is immersed in a liquid, the apparent loss of the weight of the object is equal to the upthrust. This is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. This principle is also very important, which gave many new horizons in the field of chemistry. So the history of chemistry contains two very important scientists and also the work of many other scientists and the philosophers, which helped a lot in the further studies of chemistry. Then next comes the branches of chemistry and the introduction to chemistry. Now what is chemistry? Chemistry is the science that deals with the materials of the universe and the changes these materials undergo. Like that chemistry as the name shows the chemicals, all the materials which, un uh, all the materials which undergo different changes, physical changes or the chemical changes related to the matter, related to the material are studied under this branch of science. Now the chemistry is further divided to Many important branches. Few of them are given as under. Number one is the physical chemistry. What is physical chemistry? This is the branch of chemistry that deals with the laws and theories to understand the structure and the changes of the matter. All the physical changes, shape of the materials, shape of the things, the different arrangement of the atoms that are studied, which are related to the physical condition of the matter are studied under this branch. And the laws and the theories, like all the laws and the principles, similarly, like we have studied about the principle of Archimedes, these all the things are studied under this branch. Then comes the organic chemistry. This is the branch of the chemistry which deals with the compounds or the substances containing carbon. All the substances which contain carbon are studied under this branch. But few of the carbon containing compounds like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, Carbonates and bicarbonates, you can say sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate, 
all these these are the exceptional cases that contain the carbon but they are not studied under the organic chemistry they are studied under the branch of inorganic chemistry then comes the inorganic chemistry what is inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry is that branch of chemistry which deals with all other compounds except the organic compounds like compounds which do not contain the carbon in them are studied in the inorganic chemistry but again the same thing that carbon dioxide carbon monoxide carbonates and bicarbonates these four are studied under the inorganic chemistry then comes the biochemistry what is biochemistry as the word biology says it is related to the living organisms all the chemical changes are that are related to the living organisms are studied under the branch of biochemistry for example the presence of bile in our stomach the composition of bile the composition of water composition of blood all the things where the chemicals are related all the changes that take place in the living organisms like if we talk about the plants what will they what will be the process of photosynthesis photosynthesis will be studied under the branch of biochemistry so all the changes chemical changes taking place in the living organisms are related to biochemistry the next branch is the industrial chemistry Industrial chemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the methods and use of technology in large scale production like let's study about the let let's talk about the formation of medicines medicines are formed in the are produced in the industries and many methods and techniques are used to produce these medicines on a larger scale so all the methods and techniques that are used to prepare the medicines will be studied under the industrial chemistry all the preparation of the chemicals on the larger scale are studied under the branch of industrial chemistry then there is nuclear chemistry which deals with the changes occurring in the atomic nuclei now the nuclear chemistry we you would have studied about the treatment of cancer that is the <clears throat> oncology department so they are also studied under the branch of nuclear chemistry such as all the radioactivity nuclear preparation and diagnostic tools and the in treatment of all the diseases like cancer these are studied under the branch of nuclear chemistry then comes the environmental chemistry again the word shows that it is related to the environment all the chemical and the toxic substances that pollute the environment and their effects on the human beings all these are studied under the branch of environmental chemistry like the depletion of the ozone layer presence of uh, different gases in the air composition of air and the side effects of all the pollutants on the human bodies these are studied under this branch then comes the analytical chemistry so i, I forgot to add this in this in my slide analytical chemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with the methods and instruments all the methods all the instruments that are required and that are used to analyze the composition of matter that with which a specific material is made what is the composition of a specific material what is the composition of a matter we need to different instruments we need different methods to analyze to check and to uh, find the and to do the analysis of a specific material all these procedures all these methods and the operators that are used are comes under the branch of analytical chemistry so these were the important branches of chemistry and now you will if you study them thoroughly you will be able to differentiate between them that in your normal life we can also find out different fields and then we can set the a specific branch of chemistry to a specific specific field like if we talk about today's uh, uh, nowadays there is the presence of coronavirus if we find out the effects of pollution that was present before this that was due to the automobiles that was due to the mold traffic the effect of that pollution on the human bodies when we are going to study about the chemical nature 
at that time we will be studying the environmental chemistry like and if we are studying about the process of photosynthesis in the plants at that time we will be discussing about the biochemistry similarly the other branches of chemistry also fits in our daily life okay now this topic is completed here and i would like to give you few tasks that you want you have to complete in the next week first of all you have to jot down the postulates of the dalton's atomic theory dalton's atomic theory is very important you need to note and you need to remember him all the points all the postulates and it's better to write them on a page so that you will be able to remember them and we'll check them later when the school will open and the next thing that i want to do is the first solve the example 1.1 that is given on page number 9 first of all you will solve this example on the textbook without getting help from the solution that is given at the end okay then you can first solve the example and then you can check your answers later then you will solve the self assessment 1.1 by yourself and we will discuss it once the schools will be open i hope all the things are clear to you thank you and take care